This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Thursday, November 7th, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Yesterday, the Anne Arundel County Police Department released a report on an armed robbery at the 7-Eleven in Arnold, which is located in the 900 block of Ritchie Highway. Just after 10 p.m., an armed man came into the store, demanded money. In the process of the robbery, he did assault the clerk, who sustained minor injuries. Police have not said how much money he got away with, nor do they have much information on a description of the suspect. If anybody has any information, they are encouraged to give police a call at area code 410 222 47 to zero. And with the holidays approaching, it is a tough time for retailers and people that do work in retail to keep safe. And the Anne Arundel County Police Department released some safety tips yesterday to help keep our retail employees safe. The number one tip, they said that if you are involved with a robbery, comply with the robber and do not risk your life or anyone else's for property. They suggest that you remain alert. Opening and closing periods are particularly vulnerable times for low staffing and large amounts of cash on hand. And you also want to make sure that you report any suspicious activity. That's the old see something, say something. As far as visibility on a retail front, good visibility allows employees to be aware of what's going on around the store. You want to keep your doors and windows clear and post any kind of signage to the side or the top or the bottom. That allows visibility both out of and into the store. Cash registers should be centrally located and counter displays should be low. If you're making trips to the bank to deposit large sums of cash, you want to make sure that you do that frequently as well as vary in your travel times and the routes just to reduce any kind of predictability. They do suggest that you prepare some marked money. Record non-consecutive serial numbers, note them down, of 5 and $10 bills, but you don't use the bills in normal transactions. What you do is you just sort of place them in the till to be tossed away to the robber in case you are robbed. Makes sense to me. You also want to be vigilant to be able to identify any potential suspects. For every customer, you want to greet them, and this is just basic good customer service. Establish eye contact and remember their general appearance. That will discourage a hesitant robber, but it also is good customer service. Physically to the store, they do suggest putting height markings along the vertical frame of the entrance. So if somebody is fleeing out the door, you can tell approximately how tall the robber might be. And they're in a lot of convenience stores. You take a look next time you walk out of one and you'll see some number markings on the door jams. And that's what they're for. And also, and this is my big one, consider installing a quality video camera. And my emphasis is on quality. There's so many video shots that come out. They look like the Loch Ness Monster coming out of some lake in Scotland. They'll never catch a crook. Get a solid video camera. The Maryland Transportation Authority is at it again. Yesterday, we told you about the westbound center lane closures from 11 to 1 p.m. Well, they are changing that up, and it's going to be closed from 11 a.m. to 2.45 p.m. They're saying now that it's likely the crews are going to be unable to pour concrete for several days during the day and night because of the weather. So they're going to take advantage of what they say is good temperatures. And also, the overlay sections in that work zone are longer and require an estimated three and a half hours to pour. What all that? means is that westbound backups are probably going to exceed three miles. We'll add an additional 25 to 30 minutes to cross the bridge. Also during these closures, wide loads and permit vehicles greater than 10 feet wide will not be allowed to pass, so you want to plan accordingly. What a mess. The Preakness Stakes is for sale. Well, not the race itself, but the naming rights to the race. And Allied Sports is now selling what is believed to be the first presenting sponsorship for the Preakness Stakes. Price on it has not been determined yet, but the package will include 30 seconds television and radio spots and integration with the NBC broadcast of the Preakness Stakes when it runs next May. Of course, there will be on-site signage and hospitality as well, and it's going to be modeled after the Kentucky Derby's Woodford Reserve sponsorship. Preakness Stakes, presented by Ion Annapolis, has a nice ring to it. Now, we just got to figure out that pesky detail about the millions of dollars it's going to cost. Well, it wasn't a couple million dollars, and it didn't cost the Lighthouse Shelter anything, but they have received a Medtronic Life Pack 500 AED, which is an automatic electronic defibrillator. It was donated by HeartSmart, which is the Cliff R. Roop 
Cardiac Support and Education Foundation. Joanne Matson, who is the executive director for the Lighthouse, said that they have about 300 people walking through the doors each day, and it is important to us that we do all we can to keep everyone at the Lighthouse safe. Now, Cliff Roop is a former county councilman who passed away during a council meeting. He stepped away from the dais to walk outside and had a sudden massive heart attack and passed away within the hour at Anne Arundel Medical Center. Had an AED been present, he very likely would have survived. So this is good news for the Lighthouse Shelter. All right, it is Thursday. You do want to check out the Maryland Crabs today at noon for a security talk with Todd Rosenthal, who is a security director for an international government contracting firm. We also have Trevor with your Annapolis Makerspace Maker Minutes coming up. And as we do always, George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. And once again, it's a cold one. All that coming up in just one minute. When a ring from the United States Naval Academy comes into Zachary's for a center stone, it always makes us wonder, where's this one going? Where's this one been? A nuclear sub in the North Atlantic? A carrier deck in the South Pacific? The moon? 52 astronauts are Academy graduates. From Iwo Jima to Okinawa. Corregidor to the Coral Sea. Midway to the Persian Gulf. Congress to the White House. These rings go where America goes. 73 that went to war were awarded the Medal of Honor. But wherever they go, wherever they may serve, our admiration goes with them. Zachary's. Online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. More than a jewelry store, a jeweler. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, November 7th. Okay, here's the deal. One more nice day today for the Annapolis region with mixed skies and temps near 60 before the first of two very cold cold fronts moves through the region. This one bringing some rain and maybe even a wet snowflake or two to the area later tonight and tomorrow morning before cold air enters the region with 40s for highs tomorrow and Saturday and 30s and maybe even some 20s for lows Saturday and Sunday morning before sunshine and 50s returns for Sunday afternoon. And looking ahead, cold front number two should move through late Monday into Tuesday, bringing more cold air and a bit of a greater chance of some snow flurries, snow showers, or even a brief period of light snow before more 40s for highs on Tuesday, with possibly colder temps the rest of next week. Stay tuned for updates on this winter-like weather headed for the area, but enjoy today while it lasts. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there, and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores, and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather-informed. Hello, friends. This is Brian Griffiths from RedMaryland.com, inviting you to the 2020 RedMaryland.com Leadership Conference, Saturday, January the 11th, 2020, at the Doubletree Hotel in Annapolis. Confirmed speakers include Congressman Andy Harris, Commerce Secretary Kelly Schultz, Transportation Secretary Pete Ron, Senator J.B. Jennings, Senator Steve Hershey, Senator Justin Reedy, Delegate Nick Kipke, Delegate Kathy Schlega, Delegate Lauren Arakan, WBAL Radio's Andrew Langer, and Jerry Rogers, Maryland Federation of Republican Women President Diana Water, Maryland Young Republicans Chairman Maria Sophia, Lauren Bogley from the Maryland Right to Life, and so much more. Tickets are available at redmarylandconference.com. Sponsorship opportunities and vendor tables are also available. That's redmarylandconference.com. Don't miss out on your opportunity to attend the redmaryland.com leadership conference Saturday, January the 11th in Annapolis. Once more, buy your tickets now at redmarylandconference.com. Every week, makers, crafters, and educators hold events all over the area. Highlighting some of those, here's our Makers Minute, brought to you by Annapolis Makerspace. 
Hey, this is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Today at Knits and Pieces off of Bestgate Road in Annapolis, they're having their first of four sessions for a beginner crochet class. On Saturday, Rasa Juice Shop and the Drifted Knot present macrame craftivity and mimosas. Learn a couple basic macrame knots, make some nice gifts, and enjoy mimosas and snacks. Also on Saturday, but at Watkins Park out near Largo, is the Trash to Treasure Green Craft Fair. Explore local crafters and artists who create treasures made from at least 50% recycled, organic, fair trade, or sustainably harvest materials. And up in Baltimore, it's already started, but going on now through Sunday is the Baltimore Book Festival and Light City, previously separate festivals. This year, they've combined into one big festival. There's food, drink, performances, light displays, and of course, books. And we're in the final few days of the Maryland STEM Festival. It runs through this Sunday as well. There are events all over Maryland to celebrate the Maryland STEM Festival, so head over to MarylandSTEMFestival.org to find events near you. At the Ray of Light studio this week, on Monday, at Local by Design at Annapolis Mall, Ray of Light is doing a blue hair and acrylic paint workshop for beginners. And on Tuesday at their Margaret Avenue workshop, they're doing adventures in watercolor textures, digging a little deeper into watercolor techniques. This week at Art Farm, on Sunday is the second session of their first exposure digital photography workshop. Learn how to use your digital camera more effectively or brush up on your photography skills. They'll cover different kinds of light, shutter speed, composition, editing, and beyond. On Tuesday is their monthly sketch night for adults. On Wednesday, their intro to improv fall semester continues as as well as their advanced improv game workshop. Also, there's still a few of their fall semester after school programs for kids. Today is stop motion animation, there's street art on Monday, art foundations on Tuesday, and mixed media art on Wednesday. At Clay Bakers in Annapolis this week, on Sunday and Monday, multiple sessions both days, they're doing handmade clay ornaments. Get a jump on the holidays and make some nice handmade ornaments. At the Anne Arundel County Public Library System this week, today at the Maryland City Library is virtual reality adventures. Today at Discoveries, the library at the mall, is electric exploration, learning about electricity with activities and challenges. Tomorrow at Discoveries Library at the Mall, there's Creative Chemistry Science Lab. Tomorrow at the Linthicum Library is Rocket Ship Rally. Try to build the fastest, highest rocket in this hands-on challenge. Saturday at the Crofton Library is Balloonacy, going balloony for balloon-inspired steam activities. Saturday at Discoveries Library at the Mall is Lunar Landing Legacy. Learn about the moon landing, meteorites, and the Saturn V rocket, as well as check out genuine lunar and meteorite samples. A Monday at the Glen Burnie Library is a homeschool series, STEM Free Play. Monday at the Linthicum Library is Book Lab, Can I Eat That? by Joshua David Stein. Learn about things you can and can't eat in our weird world. Also on Monday at the Serena Park Library is your Minecraft Club. Tuesday at the Odenton Library is Hackathon. Advance through computer game levels to hone your hacking skills. And finally on Wednesday at the Crofton Library is your Nature Explorers Club for ages 7 through 11. At Unallocated Space in Severn this week, tonight is their InfoSec Night, where they'll be talking about Tor, discussing what Tor is, how it works, as well as its strengths and weaknesses. Tomorrow is their DEF CON group, the DC443 Hacker Hangout, an extension of the original OSCP study group. This hangout is casual but hands-on. On Saturday, they're having a soldering class, walking through the basics of safe soldering. You'll be assembling the SparkFun Weevil Eye Kit. On Monday is their Project Night. On Wednesday is their Weekly Open House, as well as their Lock Picking 101 Lock Sport Night. At the Pongo's Learning Learning Lab and Coder Kids Club this week. On Monday and Tuesday, they're modding Roblox using the Lua programming language for grades 3 through 8. Monday is a morning session and Tuesday is an evening session. They also have their regular Lego Robotics and Standard Robotics Clubs, Gamer Club, Coder Kids Club, Builders Club, Little Scientist Club, YouTube Stars and Animators Clubs, and more. At the Paducah and Lapidary Guild this week, both Saturday and Sunday this weekend, they're doing a Cloisonne enameling class. Cloisonne pieces are generally brightly colored with enamel that is in cells with thin wire around the edges of each cell. Cloisonne is used in Art Nouveau pieces, through the mid-20th century pieces, and on to current pieces. And finally, at Annapolis Makerspace this week, tomorrow we're doing another laser training and refresher class for anyone interested in our laser cutter and engraver, particularly for members who want to get trained or need a refresher on how to use the laser. And as always, Wednesday is our woodworking open night, and Thursday is our electronics open night. And you can catch me tonight and every Thursday night at Annapolis Makerspace on Renard Court for electronics night, and you can find links to all of these events at the Annapolis Makerspace website at makeannapolis.org. Whether you're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Have you ever been to the Annapolis Mall when it opens for the day? Maybe you've noticed the line of folks waiting to get into the Apple Store. As you may know, I'm a Mac user, and today's episode of the Daily News Brief, in fact, all of the episodes of the Daily News Brief, have been produced right here on my Mac computer. What you might not know about is MacMedics. They were founded here in Annapolis in 1989, and they are an Apple-authorized premium service provider, the only one in the Baltimore-Annapolis, D.C. area. And what that means to you is that they repair all Apple devices, including the iPhone screens and batteries, all without an appointment. And most repairs are done the same day, usually within two hours. They also sell everything except the iPhone and the watch for the same price as Apple. I don't know why you would go anywhere else. 
Give them a call at 410-757-MACS, or if you're not into the whole letter thing, 410-757-6227. Stop by their retail store in Severna Park on Benfield Road or their service center in Lanham, right off of Route 50. Or you can always check them out online at macmedics.com. I'll tell you, they've saved me quite a few times, and I know they can save you. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.